Hello everyone, this is Gary from Fantastic Fundas and today in this lecture we are going to do the second part of the Congress government, the Congress rule, 28 month rule that was there. We have already discussed the why it was formed, how Congress agreed to enter the councils, we have discussed the positive aspects of it and we discussed some industrial disputes act and social reform and labor and Harijan and you, you know it all, I hope you remember that. Okay, so now we are going to start with the weaknesses of the Congress after it did the council entry. So we are going to uh, do the weaknesses of the Congress. So uh, let's let's uh, begin with where we left the first weakness, and we I told you the one of the last trends was that was there was uh, regarding the agrarian reform. You see the agrarian reforms done by the Britishers, sorry the the Congress over here. It was. Uh, as I said, it was a positive point, right? For example, reduction of rent was there, and then land revenue had had fallen, and then burden of debt was was decreased. All this was positive, but in spite of all this, you know, all this were not completely there, right? They were not completely there. Uh, they could not fulfill the aspirations of the people, right? And it could not be, zamindari system could not be abolished, stopped completely because of two reasons. Number one was, the, as you know, that the government here, it was only a provincial government. So that effectively means that the amount of power that these people had was very less. So it was not possible for them to abolish it completely. And number two was that... Uh, if we had abolished or stopped this agrarian uh, system or zamindari system completely, then there would have been loss of revenue for the provinces. And the, uh, and if there is loss of revenue, then the provinces would be at loss and the central government would be at loss. And then the central government will not support them. So the, this way, the things are happening, right? So that's number one uh, thing that the, uh, where the weakness of the Congress uh, in power. Number two is that the agrarian structure uh, had developed over many years, right? And the, the agrarian structure, it had taken many years for development and it could not, and there was not no complete information available on it, right? And, but then few good things were there, right? Uh, for example, Nazrana, there was a term used Nazrana at that time, which meant forced, uh, forced uh, gifts. Okay, Nazrana is a gift only and forced gifts and, and number one, that, that's like A and B, Begar. The Begar is forced labor, it's not Bagar, it's Begar over here. And that was also uh, uh, abo banned, abolished at that time. And for example, in, and the grazing fees was there. In, imagine because your cattle will graze, there will be fees for it. Right, it will graze and uh, it was abolished. So grazing fees was abolished and this was uh, in Bombay. Uh, where it was abolished, right? But then, but then, you know, all these are just limited things that which fully it could not be done, right? Now, uh, coming to number three, right? Let me just uh, clear the screen. Uh, number three, the point I'm going to talk, uh, talk about is that regarding the administration. Let me just quickly write it. Number three over here uh, regarding administration. Now, what is happening that... Uh, it was guarded by Viceroy, right? Now, how will you uh, abolish this thing? Uh, it will become very difficult when somebody like a uh, Viceroy is sitting there to take control of uh, such uh, power, to, to manage the past, right? Then after that, uh, we'll talk about number four. Number four is about that the, uh, there were a lot of differences between the Congress on one side and the provinces which were uh, non-Congress because their views did not match and so all these disputes they were there right so uh, that that's one part of it right and uh, especially you know in Bengal there was a major dispute if you recall from the, the earlier lecture that in Bengal it wasn't the Congress that was ruling so uh, in Bengal the civil liberties civil liberties they continued to be curbed 
and and the prisoners were still in jails without trials so, so in bengal the conditions were worse and congress versus non congress so congress could not succeed in marking a common ground with the provinces which had non congress government right now moving ahead uh, this was pretty much about the weaknesses of the congress you can always answer this question in paper all right now after this i am going to talk about the second basic aspect of the whole development the second basic aspect is essentially about the dilemma here and this dilemma was this like you know on the one side we have our indian citizens right and on the other side side there was this government owned right now Indian citizens would look at the Congress government with a sense of pride and sense of ownership, and they would want to do something to their favor, right? But on the other hand, this government, this Congress government over here, it was very weak and uh, very slow at meeting the demands of the Congress, as there were constraints which are inherent in working through constitutional uh, process. So everyone was like sort of angry with the Congress because Congress could not, neither could neither fulfill fulfill its demands as the government nor could it uh, agree to the demands of the indians as such so what happened the opposition to congress started now, everywhere uh, 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 many you know uh, blamed congress that it was as good as the britishers or in other words the imperialists were right it is just as good as them and then with the formation of the congress the many kisan sabhas also came up kisan sabha came up and in every part of the country and because of this there was lot of trade union activity right and now when trade union activity is there congress is again in dilemma 
and student and youth movement revived and cpi even though it is was banned it brought its uh, weekly uh, what was what was called as the national front at almost this time only now congress at this time was so baffled that it did not know that what to do with the situation where its own base was getting affected right its own base was getting away from the congress and congress was not aware about about what to do about it you see i i tell you why it was confused about what to do what not to do on the one hand it often used section number 144 of crpc please you should be very well aware of what this section is uh, irrespective of whether you have law optional or uh, law subject or not everyone should know it right it was against the agitating workers uh, okay now then left wing critics were there well, 144 crpc um, I, i'll i can't go into much detail because this is a history series i'll just tell you this much that there cannot be a gathering right simply put okay curfew simply put in very very uh, lame as language it's not the exact anyway so <clears throat> left wing critics they were not satisfied that what are you doing guys congress please work properly left wing was very angry with them and then uh, now whenever we talking about reactions uh, two three people are there whose reactions are very important for us right now for example uh, like in in cricket if sachin says something it becomes important the same way when nehru or gandhi say something about the uh, happenings of a particular time it becomes important for us and this is what nehru uh, was talking about and he was not happy with the ministries that were formed he was saying that these guys are not on the right track something needs to be done about it and uh, you know but openly you know public stance was different publicly he would never criticize them and uh, gandhi also felt that uh, this is what what is happening is not right but his idea um, uh, was not uh, same as that of communist his idea because communist said were in support of militant agitation but this guy gandhi he was new as you all know he was a non violent man and thus he opposed uh, on the basis of the non violence because he was saying you guys congress you are again and again using this colonial law and order uh, colonial past to control the law and order right so th- he accused congress of misuse of power uh, of using violence against the indians and he he even said that if you can't run the government without the use of official machinery resign nahi aati chhod dijiye seedhi si baat and many congressmen even began to give away uh, give away to casteism in search of their power so you know because they were all they would use this casteist tendency and then in october 1939 finally what happens that i'll just clear the screen because this is another important step uh in 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 october 1939 um uh, the one main thing that had already started was the world war 2 and basically from here we'll see that the congress has started resigning and one reason was the world war 2 started and second uh, gandhi and nehru and others they you know they were all uh, forcing the congress to resign and even the pressure of the communist and and also many factions and all other groups right so gandhi ji welcomed it that uh, it will help cleanse the rampant corruption in congress now gandhi is saying that the congress congress of this time you know is corrupt and uh, resigning will help you know clean corruption okay now this is not the exact code so we'll just put the single code this should be read as a single code right now to sum up the whole thing right uh, was it good was it bad like such questions because are asked and often in paper was it successful so we can say that in summary right if we have to make a balance account of this balance sheet of this then the legislative and the administrative record was an positive that they did some good stuff number 1 number 2 is that even though the left wing was critical right uh, even but they also know that their expectations were fulfilled okay so left expectations uh, how how was this done uh, talked about it industrial development act and all those right you know that uh, in the early election we discussed all that and then third achievement to sum up was the communist uh, sorry the communism communalism okay communalism was controlled in a big manner and congress even foiled the british plan of using the constitutional reform to weaken the national movement so british plan as i discussed initially of provincialization of congress even that was defeated right british lost in this 
and then the indian civil servant the you know ic as of that and the is of today they realized that oh that this congress is going to come to power very soon and this these people uh britishers they will have to resign so they also started losing faith in the britishers so now please understand like everywhere in social media like you know social media channels are la to great extent so, you know there's a lot of ignorance around and they don't understand the things completely they say the only reason india got freedom was this there there's no no one reason for india getting independent and is officers at this time realize ics officers that congress is going to come into power if the officers here are realizing this that means that uh, the, 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 uh, their faith in the britishers was shattered and slowly what happened they also started coming in support of this and this is very important step and this is one of the the important uh, turning point which supported our freedom ultimately on 15 august 1947 you just cannot say that this one incident to gave us freedom this is very important point please do remember this and do mention it right and then you know even though there was factionalism but the stronger bounds were there right and uh, you know anyway and and the resignation from the par it also proved that the congress ministry they were not after the par right but therefore for the emancipation of the people uh, from the foreign yoke and uh, then you know left and right like uh, they they kept united left versus right though they fought like they had their argument but they did not divide now this is very important step and this was the plan of britishers that i we will divide left and right and then thus win o- over both of them and the britishers failed in their strategy over here right and all the sections of the society were in place this is very important poor rich landlords i mean the tenant and everyone everyone was influenced by the congress government and the most important one right and this was the basic premise on which the uh, british rule was based and this was right please remember this one that the indians are not fit to rule now this 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 premise was broken right now this is very important and this was broken and now we proved it that we can also rule what will happen now i have been talking about this since almost the in your, from from the initial 10 lectures what was happening what is happening here now that we have proven it now this gives us faith to fight when you have faith with faith you can move the mountains right when i am going to teach you ethics very soon so when i teach you ethics there also will be talking about this with faith you can move the mountains and people had the faith that they can rule themselves then it takes big revolution the shape of big revolution so all the things that happened after this this election had a very important role to play in the achievement of our freedom on 15 august right and then so the sto- lecture ends there but now i would like to tell you something about the upcoming lectures for the sake of continuity of the understanding the the real story after this starts from 1938 haripura session of congress right and then th- there will be tripuri session tripuri and then there would be uh, uh pakistan resolution and then there would be august offer and then there would be crips mission now all this is fine right but i'll come to all this story uh in not not from the next lecture right because to understand all this now we need to understand that what had happened mo- about the more aspects uh, up till now uh, uh, that is up to the 1937 uh, for for example in the in the next lecture i would like to talk to you about the peasant movements the the peasant movements this will also help you understand now please do listen to this don't just skip this part of the lecture because it helps better understanding of the whole uh, history as just one object so we'll talk i'll talk to talk to you about the peasant movements i've already talked about the peasant movement of 1920s earlier 30s and 40s i'll be talking in the upcoming lecture and now meanwhile you know uh, already the freedom struggle in princely states had also started so what was happening in the princely states Uh, if you remember the one of the initial lectures i talked about it then number one that there is uh, something called the british areas and then there were the princely states areas okay now in in the princely state areas what was happening the freedom movement there i will like to talk about few princely states in detail and in about some in very short detail then then the, uh, this uh, decade of 1930s is also very important from the point of view of the contribution of the capitalists to the freedom movement 
so we'll talk about that and then after that uh, we'll also talk about what was the foreign policy of uh, uh, india the na of the of the national foreign policy how it developed at this time this lecture will also help you in better understanding of international relationships this uh, on foreign policy uh, and then the one last final thing would be that a long long uh, discussion right probably it will spread over uh, three to five lectures uh, it's about communalism right this is very important topic this will cover your social sociology also this will cover your history also and then you can always mention this in your essay exam and this will be very important for your interview also this communalism topic over here i'll be talking about this in quite a detail we'll understand what is this ism this special ism of communalism okay this ism we'll discuss in detail and then after that and we i will uh, be coming back to uh, this uh, haripura uh, session and tripri and uh, you know so on right pakistan resolution august of a crips mission don't worry you know you'll remember all this right so th this is about this part of the lecture right and now before you go like always i just have one request if you like this lecture please do share it with others do spread the word and number two is if you want all this lecture to come right into your email box then you will need to subscribe to us and that you can do by clicking over here on this button right so uh, that's all and thank you so much for watching this